So, here was the brilliant idea for this morning. Let's go for a sail. Haven't done that for a few thousand miles. <laughs> As you can probably tell by the voice, I had a bit of a chest thing going on. So I'd gone to see Dr Tony and it turns out he owned a lovely new catamaran. And off we went for a sail. A 12 metre shoning design, weighs all of five tonnes and goes like stink. However, the plan was to go see South Africa, so parked the boat under Table Mountain. The boat is in the V&A waterfront marina, beautifully protected, flat cam and about 250 stinky sea lions swimming around. So, my apologies if you've tuned in for a yachting video, but this is the first leg of our trip through the mountains on Bike Bandit, so let's jump right in. So first up we left Cape Town and we did the back roads around to Hout Bay. In Simon's Town we have Cape Argoulis away down there. We have seagulls and we have penguin. Tastes like chicken. South African penguin. Around the coast to Gordon's Bay. <laughs> Betty's Bay, all the way around to the point, down here, and about here, we ran out of tar. And the smooth black stuff gave way to grey, gravelly stuff. It didn't help we were lost, but in the end, we made it to our Strauss Bay and Agulas Point. Cape Agulis, the southernmost point of Africa. A bit more off-roading and we were into Agulis National Park. And this is a giant map of the continent of Africa. Like this, one I prepared earlier. There you go, Indian Ocean to the east, Atlantic Ocean to the west. Southernmost tip of the continent of Africa. We bumped and wobbled our way to go and have a look at the Cape Agulhas Lighthouse. 150 years old and counting. <coughs> After the gravel road excursion to Agulhas, we went up to Swelling Dam, up the back roads, and then along here across this back road and then up the Tradus Pass to Barrydale. Having been brought up on a TV diet of Africa's savannas, it was something of a surprise to find so many twisty alpine roads. It was even more of a surprise to find out that some of them didn't have tar, but more of that later. And then out the pass, we popped into Barrydale. 80% of the guest houses we stayed in were just brilliant. Free parking, lovely big rooms, bed and breakfast, patio, and almost always a room with a view. Shades of Wales, maybe? Small vineyard, keeps the owner busy. Surrounding mountains, really rather lovely. So from Barrydale, we followed the tar all the way up to Oatshorn via Kalitsdorp. Welcome to Buffalo's Drift, home for elephants, cheetahs and lions rescued from assorted unfortunate circumstances. So we're going for a game walk, see what we can find. Eat like it. Wait, tell me what to do. Yes, just put out your hand like this. 
I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Don't come closer, man. Come closer. <laughs> another one. Another one. Another one. The other it's one, just, just like, like this. Take, take another one in the mouth. Turn it up. Can you put it up? Another one in the mouth. Uh, no, I can't do that. You can, man. What else that. will you do? No, this? no, no, no. I can't do that. Okay, keep it in the trunk then. Another one in the trunk, but take the side. You do, you do it. You do it. No, you have to do it, man. You, it's your I time to I've, feed them. I, I feed them every day. Oh, stupid. I can't. Look like it. Oh, so it's just the head of the elephant. Just hold it like this. It doesn't feel like a hand, actually. I'm sorry for Yeah, like a sea biscuit. Keep your hand flat. Another one. Oh, Stuart, you're much more brave than I am. Look at the size of you. How much, how much did he eat? Is that one? At this age, about 250 to 300 kilos per day, one elephant. Wow. Oh. 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 Hello. Oh, you're gorgeous. Oh, no way. of them walking a lot to stand for water they drink around here you can, uh, it's over there inside there's a lot of water you can yeah. see water hole so as you can see they're already hitting themselves here okay so from Oatshorn and the elephants of buffalo's drift we headed up into the mountains for a go at the schwarzberg pass and then on to prince albert we never really intended to do the Swartberg Pass. We thought it was beyond our limits. And a bit like a black run going skiing. Ach, we'll just go and have a look at it. Here we go. So that's a car the same as yours, Ian. Coming down this pass that we've just come up. For some reason I had my eyes shut. Down into the valley. We're quite high up. Mountains and mountains and mountains and mountains. It's very beautiful. <laughs> Probably more beautiful than we'd expected. Onwards and upwards, and the views just kept on getting better. Finally, de top. And look, there's Africa. And what goes up must come down the squiggly way. Down there somewhere is the way out. You can just see it disappearing into that cleft in the mountains. And tomorrow the bike goes in to get new brake pads. These passes were built by Thomas Bain, the son of a Scotsman, of course. And uh, they're really quite impressive. All built to join up the interior so they could get their goods to market. Now there'd been heavy rain a few days before. Fortunately we got it when it was just a trickle. But in case you're wondering, this is what it looked like about a week before we showed up. Way beyond our capabilities. Get your feet up, missus.
And after all that excitement, we popped out into sleepy Prince Albert. Lovely little town, big church, and interestingly enough, the railings for the church made by Walter McFarlane of Glasgow. Art Deco, and that's it. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, best keep it to yourself. Come back for more of the road trip. Thanks again.